and welcome to the woman's cave slash righteous class. Okay, so you know, y'all, I'm trying to be a better person and let Winona have her moment in the sun, you know, like every hello. Welcome. That's why the sun is beaming in on me so beautifully. Don't you see the aura of wonderfulness? Actually, this is just nice no, to say. Nobody sees that aura. <laughs> oh, I can see it. <laughs> dead in the water now okay. <laughs> i had an entire thing to say oh you had yes it was like i beat over and i was like let me just let me no. just take the left no no okay. and no no i can't win that one it's all right, all right. it's all Never right mind. i also wait 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 you can win i graciously yield now you know <gasps> my name is jade and i'm well known and by the way good job for yeah me. high five because Social i want this style because listen i was not gonna have our guest introduce us because she was like if you don't <laughs> I will do it for it. That's and a perfect threat. I think every guest should threaten us. We'll remember. <laughs> oh, we'll remember. We'll be like, oh, we don't want to see that bad at our job. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so we wrote books. Right. Well, we like to call literary life guides for pop poetry because, you know, poetry and anthology seems <laughs> a little, it gets stuck in my throat when I go. So you like, oh, oh, poetry. Oh. No. Anyway, so, and I thought the woods was bad with other life lessons, and I thought being grown up was easy if only I were me. All of those are audiobooks. Um, and only I will me will be soon available. Yeah, let's pick one more. So and, maybe do four. Well, you have that one, so and I thought I did my journey alone. That works for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you can check out everything your ladies are doing at www.andwethought.com or and our, the abbreviated version at and www.andithoughtladies.com. Since I have the floor right now, I just particularly want to say y'all. The 25 Hottest 25 is coming. Hottest Authors, Artists, and Advocates is coming out soon. Soon. Very, very, very soon, y'all. I'm still working on it, but we're going to get there. Three, three to four weeks. Three to four weeks. Yeah. yeah there yeah. we go. Now, let's move on to something else yes. more interesting than us. Yeah, y'all are here. hard pressed to find because I am oh an narcissist, so mm. therefore I'm interested. Y'all aren't here to hear about us. You're here to hear from our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, you've just floored me, and no one's ever called me a wonderful guest. I haven't even said anything. Yeah, but yeah, my name is Leslie Lair, and I am the author of this pop culture memoir, A Boob's Life, because I really like to talk about boobs, just how it is. <laughs> well, well, you one. must have fun at bars. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I liked to talk about boobs so much until I decided to write the book, and it's easy to talk about. So, okay, so when did you decide to write the book, and how did you decide? I got out of the shower one night and I looked in the mirror and I saw that my boobs were crooked and I was so mad. And I had, I had um, recovered from breast cancer and all the stuff that, you know, goes into that. And I knew I should be grateful for a lot to be alive. And I really was, but I was still so mad. And I just thought back of my whole life. Like when you're a little girl, I wanted bigger breasts. And then, you know, there's where I grew up in the Midwest, it was all cheerleaders and beauty queens and then you I had to hide my breasts when I finally got him to get a job and I showed him to date and then I breastfed and I got big and beautiful and then they all saggy and gross and then my mom like thought I was deformed because she didn't breastfeed because I had got so I got breast implants after I got a divorce and then I got breast cancer and it was like my whole life after everything that I've like been thinking about my breasts and all those things my breasts have been through and the cancer and the, all that stuff it's like shouldn't they be perfect by now and my, my, we had just moved into this really cute house, um, kind of as a reward because I lived and my, we were, it was supposed to be our first date night, right? But I get out of the shower and put my cute little nightgown on. And I was so mad that, about my breasts. And my husband just said, you're obsessed. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm a feminist. And, we, and I kind of chilled out and sat down for a minute. And we watched TV and this comedian on TV made a boob joke. And I was like, it's not me, it's everybody. And then I just, I, but then I was mad again and I wanted to call my doctor. So date night was off, my husband went to bed. And we had just, because I was like, I couldn't figure out why I was obsessed. And I, we had just moved, so we had all these boxes. So I opened the first box and I started looking at these pictures and scrapbooks and I was like, I realized, wow, I was totally obsessed my whole life. I had never put my life together like that. And, but it wasn't just me and all this other stuff that happened you know, made me that way and everybody that way. And so I just realized that was my next book. And I hadn't thought I'd write another book after cancer really because it took a while for the brain fog to go away. But um, it was like that night, this is the book. This is how I was going to write it. And it just kind of became a mission. And then it's fun to talk about breasts too. Wow. Well, I mean, okay, this so is fun. a very interesting mission. And I just need to ask one more question. Huh? 
So what good news did you get this morning? Yes. Oh, mom, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. Um, good Morning America set, put announced that A Boob's Life is on their top must-read books for March. Okay, good morning, guys. freaking America. I know. Oh, my goodness. So I had to just want to celebrate with you. I know. Thank you, you so much. So, Thank you so much. Now we'll know. you guys. I I'm can't like, believe it. It's like for so long, and this book was hard to sell because it was a, a memoir, but I'm not a celebrity and it's part not cultural analysis, but it's not nonfiction. So it took a while to sell. And, and for so many times I was like, oh, maybe I can't write another book and maybe it's not another book. And am I crazy to think it's a book? And finally to have it not only be a book, but something that freaking Good Morning America thinks is a must read. Yeah, thank you. I, it's like, I totally thought I had lost my mind for so long. And now it's like, no, I had, it was, I was right. It's amazing because I'm not right that often. So, so I know. mean, yes, that was, was like a huge win, right? Day. And this is like a like, huge, am I crazy? Am I crazy to no. This is a world premiere announcement. Thank you to you for, for doing it. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I, you're I, the I, first to know. I haven't even told my mother yet. <laughs> well, you know, we won't put this out until you tell your mother. Edna. Okay, I'll tell her. She'll be very happy. Because <laughs> <laughs> she actually, there's a picture of her in a bikini in the, in the book. But, um, you know, bikinis back in the day, they weren't like they are now, but still. Oh, so yeah, you mean like yeah. the bikini that I wear? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. yeah. We're, we're vintage bikini. Yes, oh, yeah, it. well, then it is like that. 1914 yeah. is like, oh, like, we'll do like a 1950s one. Like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think, okay, I think not important. I'm about to get off way off. Though. Yeah, we no, but for off. boobs, for boobs, you need those because you need some support if you have boobs, you know, and if you don't, you need some flowers and ruffles or something. Or, I don't know, but. Yeah. Um, I, I have so much to say, but I would give away way too many things. Oh, wait, so let's oh. move on. So we'll know okay. the question. I do, which is really rare. Um, But <laughs> you said you this was your second book. What was your first book? This is my seventh book. Seventh book. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, my first book was uh, called Welcome to Club Mom, The End of Life as You Know It. And But the publisher made me change the subtitle. He thought that was a little dark to Welcome to Club Mom, The Adventure <laughs> Begins. You know, and it did. But then I wrote another book, another like funny parenting kind of thing. And then I wrote a novel that won an award called 66 Laps. And I thought, oh, my career is made, but novels don't make any money. And I had been in the film business and production and, but I was like home with kids, couldn't get childcare. So I was like, thought I'd try and make a living writing and you know, it's really hard. So then I wrote, um, I like ghost wrote a book so I could pay for an MFA in case I would have to teach full time. And then, cause I was also teaching and you know, stuff you do. And then um, I wrote two more novels and a couple screenplays. I um, And I had one that was produced and that was fun, but still didn't make any money because it was, I, they like hired a guy to like redo. It was like, you know, being a woman is, was not a fun thing at the time. Anyway, so I've written three novels and this will be my fourth nonfiction, but my first and only memoir, I promise. So this, and this book kind of sums up all the other books. I actually talk about, you know, different experiences that having boobs uh, leads you to as a woman in America. So it actually, and it actually, I was able, the, the good thing about it not getting published until now is that um, it used to end in 2018 and I was able to it get pretty political and it goes all the way through this past election and ends in December. So it goes all the way through Me Too and Time's Up and Black Lives Matter. And I mean, it gets into very inclusionary feminism and um, that's kind of funnels all into that. So it wow. was fun. <laughs> and, and actually some colleges are thinking of it as an alternative text, which is funny because it's also going to be a comedy TV series. So it kind of has something for everything. Anyway. I love that. When I read it, I was like, oh my goodness. Congrats. Yeah. Yes. Now let's switch subject from novels. So you said you were a screenwriter. So what, what skills were able to be transferred into writing novels? And then of course it's me. So I have a two part. Yes. Great. Uh, I'm, I'm a structure person. So for me, I was reading screenplays first. Um, I mean, I wrote, I always wrote like, I never thought I'd be a writer, actually. I wanted to be a big producer. And um, I grew up in Ohio and, you know, rented like a school TV station and stuff and came out to film school. And, um, but when I started writing scripts, I just thought the stuff out there was shitty and I could write better. And there wasn't stuff I wanted to see a lot, you know? So I started writing scripts, but, um, when I realized it was really hard to sell a script and I would just try and write a novel and see if that would work because I was home with the baby anyway. 
Um, yeah, like I had, I mean, I wrote them all the night. My dad would say, what do you do all day? I'm like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> they don't know. Anyway, um, I start exactly the same way. I really do. I'm a structure person. I got to figure out the narrative drive. And I actually married my favorite screenplay guy, uh, John Truby, who we've only been married 10 years, but I took his class like 35 years ago, at, right after film school, when I was starting to write more. And I pretty much use all his structure stuff in everything. My New York Times, Modern Love, my books, my essays is kind of his structure theory of steps of have a character, has to have a goal, you know, all the, the obstacles in the way, weakness, need. So I'm, I do, I figure out the structure, which is a kind of an outline. I figure that with an outline, then you can be free. Then you know where you're going to get, where you're going to go. And then you can play around in between and switch things around and you have other revisions anyway. But I start scripts and books the same way. And then because a script is, you know, the outline and then a book, you just get to fill in people's thoughts more and describe things. So you don't need a crew to do it. But so for me, it's a similar process to begin. Wow, um, I, I like I like that. I've never as an outline it, yeah. situation like that. Yeah, that, you've given me a new method. I know yeah. that instead was of me method. always being like, "Oh, this is a beautiful book. Let me just tear it to pieces so it can become a script." <laughs> yeah, well, it's the backbone. It's a backbone, and it's just in a script you have the advantage of these really talented people in all these departments to add, you know, the flesh. So exactly. So you also said you wanted to be a producer. Can you, you tell you are a producer? Yeah. Well, can you tell me what, what goes into being into the career of trying to career track of trying to be a producer? Well, um, I did go to film school, which at the time people thought was stupid. They just wanted people who knew people more experienced. But I came from Ohio, didn't know anyone, still really don't. <laughs> it's like, you know, like cold calling and I had to be a receptionist a lot. And I just worked my way up from being a production assistant. At one time I, I was gonna go to law school thinking I could get in the studio system that way, but then I actually got a pretty good job in production on staff. So I really worked my way up on sets as from production assistant, production coordinator. And then I was a staff production manager doing budgets and stuff like that, writing on the side, having a script in my drawer because this wasn't what I really wanted to do, but I was in commercials and videos. And then I did freelance on some films and stuff, but the hours were really long. And when I had my first child, um, my husband at, at the time and my, our careers were just, you know, we couldn't always be out of town or on location. I had real trouble getting babysitters for long hours. And even when I did, he would guilted me into feeling like it was my fault if something bad happened. This is part of my boob story. And so I, I, burned a lot of bridges and started saw, thought oh I'll just try writing so right now with this book um Salma Hayek is uh optioned it for HBO to be a comedy series and I'm going to be an executive producer so this is really the first time yeah I know I know my it's because it's a, a hard I, I mean title, I'm gonna give so you I'm like so a high five blue the high five you were hard for that it doesn't give me like control and they wouldn't let me write it because they wanted like an approved, you know, mm -hmm. HBO writer. I mean, maybe down the line, but my agent was like, she needs a seat at the table. And this of course was, uh, you know, and a seat at and they were like, okay, so that means I get to have an opinion. It doesn't mean I get a say, but so this is the first time in all these years since my kids have been born that I'm kind of now back in production. I mean, when I wrote a script and had it made, I could visit the set and stuff. That was very early on, my kids were little. But um, this is the first time I'm actually, you know, going to be involved in the conversations. And they're naming the main character, Leslie, and my boobs are going to talk. So thank God I have a seat at the table so I get an opinion, you know, because yeah. it's, I mean, it's going to be totally different than the book, of course. I mean, the book's a book and it's the real story, and, but still it's, so it's we finally, have, it's together. We have to ask the all important question. Yeah. I have, I have like, wait, I have two questions. Okay. One question is, how validated do you feel about being- How what? Validated do you feel oh. being able to come back and do it after after you basically got guilted out of doing your job and then yeah. another like- and what yeah, would you He's not my women, husband anymore. <laughs> yeah, and what would you tell women because of the pandemic, a lot of women are in that very same situation. Like, oh my God. I try to part-time homeschool my children and try to like do my job. And what would you tell them? I don't know if it's just those women I talked to because I mean, the New York Times said it right at the beginning of the pandemic and I did just finish the book in December so I'm able to discuss it a little bit too but the pandemic has definitely taken us all back. I mean, I think childcare is the number one most important 
thing that we need to have in this country. And, and so we really need to get out a vote. I heard Stacey Abrams last night on a talk show talking about voter suppression. I mean, we gotta just make sure that everyone can vote so that women can have as much opportunity and that requires equal pay and equal um, and, and childcare. And you know, Uncle Sam provided childcare during World War II when women had to work. And as soon as the men came back, suddenly women who still had to work, because a lot of men weren't around or you know, they had babies they didn't want to pay for or whatever. And women has just got screwed over ever since, you know. So it's really hard. I mean, I think the burden of childcare, America, the United States is like 29th in the list of countries around the world. I mean, countries that have a lot going for them in terms of our family support. And so there's a lot of brain power for women that's being wasted. And right now, women, we are trapped. I mean, my my editor at my publisher is like so overwhelmed just trying to help me with the book. She's got two little boys, you know, and, and she's like, I, I can only do help. And I'm trying to help her because my kids are out of the house. I mean, everyone's got kids at home. It's like we're doing three jobs and we used to be doing three jobs too, but now it's right here, you know, right in front of us. So I would say for women, the most important thing you can do is self-care because if we don't take care of ourselves and it's not selfish, but we, we just are going to run out and that actually lowers our immune system and will get us sick, not only more susceptible to COVID and exhaustion and not getting along with people, but breast cancer, your immune system is really important. And I think that's how I got it just by being stressed out because physically I was fine and healthy, but um, we have to not be the ones who are always in charge. Ask for help for your husbands, make sure that people that know their responsibilities don't think they can read your mind because <laughs> men cannot read your mind, you know, and get your kids. We just need help. We have to stop thinking, just stop thinking it's our job to do everything because it's impossible. It's going to kill us and it's going to make us unhappy and we're going to lose money and not be able to have careers that engage us and make us exciting and more better role models and parents. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about I've been I've been all I've been thinking about it as the pandemic and my friends are talking to me and they're like, I feel like I have to do it all. I'm like, but you don't. <laughs> yeah, but people are afraid to ask because it feels like, oh, we're supposed to do it all or it's weak or I'm selfish. And it's like, no, we, we shouldn't be able to and we cannot or we will fall over. And then think what families will do once the women's go, go under, you know? Oh, so oh. they we need to all be equal in help. I always, um, women that say that, I always like, well, look at the divorced dad sometimes or, or the widowed father. He learned to do it all, but mostly he learned to do Absolutely. it all by, by asking if that man can learn. Then it's learn. learned helplessness. Oh. And, and the thing is, the best way to ask that I've learned is instead of you have to do this, say, I really need your help. You know, because if, if they, they'll like will feel good about themselves if they can help you, but not if they're told that they need to do stuff. So all of the kids, you know, and the parents and the, the mates and partners and husbands and wives, it's like, I, I need your help. I just can't do this all. I, I really need to, you know, if we can ask from a vulnerable place, and not feel shame about it. I think that makes it easier, you know. That's interesting. Oh, my question, yeah. which is probably going to be the last one. I have two, 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 two questions. Oh yeah, you're the, the last, last question. question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, my question is: um, after all the times of being on set, how was craft service? Oh my gosh, my favorite thing. <laughs> like, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, I, red licorice whips. I mean, I, I still have to eat a lot of red, red licorice. Just stay away from the donut area. But getting good craft service makes any production. It makes everybody happy. You know, if you can get someone who's actually cooking little taquitos or, you know, but healthy stuff for people who, you know, need to be healthy. The actors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've, I've okay. always said that's one evil thing to be able to get all the way out there to be on a nice paid show, recognize you have to stay small and craft services there like the entire day. I was like, this is rude. <laughs> it's rude. It's really rude. <laughs> but everyone is so happy with when there's good craft service. <laughs> okay, so we've never had an opportunity to be on a set to get craft yeah. services, but I read about it Life when I was 12 goal. years old, wrote it down on my list. And Lucky. anyone who watches the show regularly knows that we have Tupperware written underneath my bed. It says craft services. And I've had it for as long as <clears throat> a little, a few years after 12. <laughs> <laughs> Just a teeny bit. It's still there. At least so, 10. At least it's 10. No, I, I totally believe in having a goal. It's like, um, I'm not going to forget the guy's name who wrote The Power of Intention. If you set up what you're going to do, he's done now. But um, if you picture yourself at what your goal is, like having that craft service 
then you will take those steps to get there. But if you think, oh, it'll never happen, you're never gonna take the steps to make it happen. Like you gotta believe that's how you make it happen. So I am sure that that will happen for you. Absolutely. We, we, sure we asked, that's yeah. why we actually went around interviewing people in Hollywood. We've asked everywhere. <laughs> yeah. we were like, we don't, I mean, it's not like I don't, we don't want to meet the actors. And the, like, we oh, no, no, you're I, very smart. This you is don't very strategic. Be, yeah, yeah, you don't want to be rude. To that, but really what I want is craft services. Yeah, so I mean, free like, buffet. If you, if you need All me day. to talk to these people so you won't get a bad, I will absolutely do it. Probably with a chicken leg hanging out my mouth. Well, they're all so, going to make it over there anyway. It's one, some point of the day at craft services. So. Oh, okay. Well, we're just going to be there all, all day. day. All day. <laughs> like, all day. It's we'll not a chair. We'll just be there yeah. all day. It's, By it's, the little bottles of Perrier, that's what, that's where they'll, they'll want to. Take. So yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there we for the water. There. I'm not there for the water. I'm no, no, no. But the actors will. That's why you eat and hang out on that end and they'll find you because they'll, they want to hydrate all the time. Oh, oh no no that no, no the oh, actors God. will yeah i know i'm just saying like yeah. we, we have to discuss this afterwards yeah i want to just okay. talk about how very very sad that is because you have all that junk food and you're yeah. worried about like, <laughs> oh <laughs> but they gotta be on camera and, and now yeah. with hd cameras it's like you have to be extra skinny because everything oh, shows right okay oh. we can talk about this yeah we're gonna anyway. talk about that's the last yes. question so where can people find out more about you and besides your besides the good morning america website besides that because that's yeah, exciting wow. Yeah, they um, showed my Instagram feed, Leslie Lair One. It's like, okay, follow me there. But I also, my website is, it's my, it's spelled with my name. Well, you can Google the Boobs Life, but Leslie Lair, www.lesslier.com. Everything about the book is on it. There's links to indies as well as the majors. Um, you know, there's all kinds of reviews. Publishers Weekly raved about it. I have a lot of events uh, coming up and going on for the next couple of months. And um, everything's on my website. There's lot, lots of stuff there, but also I'm on Facebook, at, you know, and Twitter. Just look up Leslie there. So it's pretty easy. Or a boobs life. It's like suddenly. I mean, the book just came out. I could not be more excited. It's been five long years, you know, since uh, actually since uh, almost six years since I thought of it and started writing it. So it's been a, it's been a long road, and I've been updating it all the time. There's all these funny boob jokes that women wrote. There's all kinds of facts, like men look at our breasts within 200 seconds, milliseconds um, of us walking in a room. So it's something we should be aware of. And uh, and I also am kind of wondering if you guys are this might be too personal, but I'm actually wearing a bra for you today, which is kind of unusual for COVID. Are you guys uh, being comfortable? Yeah. No. No. Yeah? No. I'm always. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mo's gonna be comfortable no matter what. She's gonna be like, "Oh, that that's fabulous." I'm unless it's a TV appearance. I'm very comfortable. Always comfortable. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm not, I'm comfortable. I'll go take off my bra now and get a cup of coffee. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fabulous. And we know we're not gonna hold her up from that. So I'll just go ahead and wrap us up. You can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're oh, there, take a moment. Yes, yes, no, no, do that, do that. Take a moment and go to check out the Ladies Tale podcast, one of our other podcasts where professional actors read well known as scripts. And more importantly than that, please go to the ladies tab, go down the middle and see the charities that we probably support. Some of them are doing some really great things during COVID and hopefully you can help them out with that. Also, if you want the abbreviated version of that entirely long website, you can go to www.andithoughtsladies.com. Back to you, Jane. Okay, so just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you if you're finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Will Nona. And Jade, bye-bye. Oh, 